It's a praise of his people. And, uh, you know, it's not a, it's, it's a, it, I like it when praise is just spontaneous and we just praise him without, because other people are doing it. We want to do it because we just are spontaneously praising him. Amen. Out in the foyer, there's a, a barrel, and we're going to tell you next week uh, all the things that we want to put in it for uh, Peter, Leela down in Guyana in South America. And I don't have the list with me this morning, but I'll tell you next week what we're going to start trying to get that ship down there to him. But at this time, we're going to hear from our sister Ginger and hear about the mission trip we sent her on. And uh, we're an Acts 1-8 church. If you don't know what that is, you'll be, you'll be hearing about it next week from me. But uh, the power of an Acts 1-8 church. We strive to be that, and, and every church that's <laughs> biblical should be an Acts 1 8 church. When the Lord said that, you know, after the Holy Ghost has come on you, you're going to be my witnesses. You're going to start in your local area, then you're going to branch out, and you're going to go to the that's othermost right. parts of the earth. And at this time, we're going to hear from Miss Ginger and hear how far she went this year. So <laughs> give her a hand for serving the Lord. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I did go exactly halfway around the world, um, but it was an amazing journey. And uh, I'm very blessed and thankful that I had the opportunity to go. And I'm going to just share, woo, get away from Mark. Yeah, a few of the highlights from the trip. I probably have another 300 pictures that didn't make it into the video, but you'll have a pretty good idea of what happened. Um, this was an amazing journey. This little monkey here in the middle of the picture is two inches tall. It's their tarsius that's indigenous to that island. And so he was kind of cool. But it also is called the land of flowers. Um, they have all the volcanic ash up there from the, vol the active volcanoes. And um, they have a flower festival. And I was privileged to be able to go up on one of the mountains one of the days and see from the mountaintop and could see the ocean from both sides. Up there where that little heart is in the middle of the Indonesia map, the point of that heart is basically where we were at on the end of that little flag-shaped island. And um, that was, uh, it's a Muslim country over there, but in that northern section where we were, the Muslims and the Christians get along better than most places there. Middle of the island, or the middle part of that country is a little more radical and then the southern part is the most dangerous place to be. <clears throat> this is when we are traveling those boards up there to try to find our flights. Sometimes they're in a foreign language. We had to wait for them to transfer over to English and try to catch our flight before it switched back again. But we had to watch those. And this was um, that lower left corner there. There's an A&W root beer there. They have A&W root beer and Kentucky Fried Chicken and McDonald's and things over there, but don't believe it. <laughs> it's not quite like what we're used to. The Lucky Charms picture was a shop that actually had toys and games and stuff in it, so it wasn't the cereal, which was funny. And that was just one of the structures in the um, roof of the airports there. They were beautiful as we were going through, and uh, the batik style there in uh, Jakarta at that one particular place was just really some amazing places that we went through getting there. It was a long trip. Um, two days traveling to Monado. We went to Orlando, spent the night, went from there to Dallas Fort Worth. It took uh, an extra hour flying time because of bad weather. We almost missed our flight in Dallas Fort Worth connection and uh, we had to have an escort help us run through the airport to catch the next flight, but we made it. And then we stayed, uh, we went through Hong Kong. Dallas to Hong Kong was 17 hour flight. Then we went on to Jakarta, stayed overnight there, and then flew the next day over to Manada where we were at. And so we were 12 hours difference from here. Um, then coming back was about 38 hours coming back from the time we left the hotel till I got home. And uh, I was more tired from the travel than from being there in the heat all week. <laughs> um, this was our team when we got into Monado. We stood in front of that sign. We were there. Um, that statue that's on my shoulder is interesting because I have another picture of him in the background where I did a selfie and it's on my shoulder way in the background and I didn't realize it was there too. But um, this was our team. Barry on the left is from International Commission. 
and then me. And then Dr. Julius Rains is a pastor in Warner Robins, Georgia. And then uh, Jim is a pastor. He's retired, and he's still preaching um, up in uh, Springfield, Missouri. And then back in the background, Mary is actually just from over the other side of Palatka. And then Reza was my roommate. She is also with the International Commission. And um, then Amanda is from Ocala. And then Ruth was our leader, and she's from over in Melrose. We met up with the two guys over here when we got to Dallas-Fort Worth. And then we met up with Reza and Barry when we got into Jakarta. This was our currency exchange. That's a picture of an envelope with the money there. I have some samples of the monies here that I brought back with me. Um, the currency exchange rate at the time went over there was about 14.7. And so the first thing Reza says to me is, now you're a millionaire. So <laughs> we were millionaires for the week, but uh, lunch might cost um, 48,000 rupees. So I don't know if we were really millionaires or not. But anyway, that was the exchange rate. But even though we were cash millionaires in their country for a short time, we were rich because of the results of that trip. There were 2,478 people that made professions of Christ that week, and two church plants, and another church plant that was being worked on before we left. So it, for six little people from, you know, Podunk nowhere to show up and go over there and go together, it was the work of your prayers and the work of the Holy Spirit before we got there that allowed for these results, because it's, it's not us, it's the Holy Spirit. Um, this was our leadership team in the country, Barry, and then Barron on the right was the, um, the representative from the International Commission to the churches themselves to organize the ones that hosted us and had the work planned for us during the week. This pastor and his wife down here were from the host church for the whole um, Operation Andrew is what they're calling it. And then Reza, of course, was their translator, and she helps them go ahead and before a trip comes in and helps to organize in the countries as well. And she ended up being my roommate. She was, a, um, she was raised Muslim, and she was converted to Christianity about four years ago. And we talked in Sunday school about the transform transformation of Paul and this is one girl who had that kind of transformation. She keeps sending me pictures of the places that she's gone. And she's been, I think they were in Cambodia two weeks ago. And they, she has these beautiful gowns, ornate robes that she wears and goes to these praise and worship, helps lead praise and worship in these little countries. And they had 50 hours of praise and worship on the last trip she was on. I was just blown away. She was tired. This, we were there in the middle of Ramadan, and there were displays for Ramadan everywhere we went. That was our hotel, and that was in the hotel. This one was at the airport. But this shows, it's hard to see it back in there, but that's the wooden xylophone, but there's five sets of them in sequence that take five players to play in unison to play the instrument. And they call that the kulintang, and it's their traditional Indonesian instrument. But it has kind of a island Jamaican feel when they're playing it. It was really kind of cool to watch. At breakfast every morning, we met at 7 o'clock. This is just a few of us. The rest are on the other end of the table. But we had a devotion. Each of us took a turn each morning to lead that devotion before we headed out with our teams that we were assigned to. This was our host church on the left and some of the congregation there in that little church. And this was when I first met Pastor Lenny her husband was a pastor, and so was she, but she was the pastor I was assigned to for the week, and that was when we first got to meet. These are the views out of our hotel windows. You can see out the front of the hotel. It doesn't look too bad, but out of the side, on the same other side of the same street, it's pretty rough looking. But um, that's kind of an overview of the area that we were in. And uh, these are the two churches that I spoke on the first Sunday there. The first one uh, was a little bit bigger congregation. That second one, we had to climb up probably about twice the height of this roof, up knee-high, narrow stairs like he has back there in the sound booth. And uh, even Pastor Lenny had to stop before we got to the top, before we could make it on in to the front door of that little church. 
but um, amazing spirit of the people there. They were beautiful. When I was there, my message was on Esther and about her dedication to, to God's work and her willingness to obey the call to do what she needed to do to save her people. And that's what I called those people to do, that their nation is in danger of being lost. And um, we were asking for them to partner with us during the week to be able to go out in the homes, how to teach them to use the, um, the witnessing materials and to be able to share the gospel within their own communities. We want to leave behind people who knew how to do what we were doing. That was my challenge for them at both of those messages, both of those churches. Um, this gentleman on the left was my interpreter. This is, uh, he was born in February, and his name is Fabrianto Tuana. And uh, he was, he said, just call me Feb. That's his, so we called him Feb all week. But he's an English major. He spoke very good English. We did have an opportunity to help translate a few of the words or pronunciations that he wasn't clear on during the week. But he has an amazing heart for people who call themselves Christian but don't have a relationship with the Lord. And uh, he works on a college campus with some friends of his. He teaches English. And uh, he's also gone into some of the islands out there that are known to be demonic um, practices out there. So he's really got uh, no fear of going into place as long as the Lord's with him. He also has a heart for going into India, and he's also working with a group in Texas that is partnering in missions over there. Their people have gone out a couple of times and stayed three months at a time to learn and assimilate the culture, and he will be coming over to Texas this fall to do the same on the other side of that partnership. So it was amazing for me, I felt really privileged to have somebody like this as a, an interpreter over there. It was, it was, um, it was quite amazing the, the entire week to have him there. He has a joyful spirit, and um, it didn't seem like he ever got tired. <laughs> um, this is some of the typical transportation that we ran into. That first picture up there is how tight traffic was moving 24-7 um, around the clock. It was like university students at 5 o'clock traffic, and they were all in and out everywhere. They just turned in front of you when they wanted to. There's no, I think we saw one traffic light in the entire town the whole time I was there. Uh, so you're kind of like, um, well, some of you know that I race cars, and my brother races with second gear racing, and you race the tight courses, and you really ever rarely get out of second gear. That's kind of like the driving was there. You never really got out of second gear. You had to really be ready to respond at any given second. So I thought, these guys would make it on the track over here pretty well. Um, <laughs> they really would have. But, and they're Uber drivers. You can get a vehicle if you call for a taxi, but most of their rides, they come up on a scooter, and you sit side saddle on the scooter, and that's your Uber ride. Um, this first one up here on the corner, we went to a little house the first day out. I had to climb again. Um, the houses were stacked on top of each other. Like if you took these rows of seats and turned them almost vertical, all up and down. So we had to climb about six levels up to that house. But we ministered some people in that house. And that was a view out behind. That's Pastor Lenny's husband, who was also a preacher. But we were able to see out over the roof of uh, most of Monado there. But it was pretty steep. And they, I didn't get a picture of it, but the cemeteries were done the same way. They were up the si scaled up the sides of these mountains in these vaults that you could see, and I'm like, wow, what are y'all doing a mudslide? But um, they still were there. But uh, these were, the, the children in the other pictures were a place that we went to where the kids from the neighborhood heard us down there and heard some music that these other kids were playing and started gathering, and we ended up with a huge crowd there we spoke to them and we prayed with them and all but four of them actually prayed with us to receive Christ at that group. Um, this little box down here on the left is a, it's a, it's a plywood box and it's about as deep square and like a cube and they have this board that runs up the side with frets on it and they have a weed eater string running down a single string and they have a bamboo stick and they hit the box like a drum and they hit the strings like a bass instrument, they call it a string bass. And they were playing that and a ukulele and singing and dancing there. 
and um, when we got through with the prayers and stuff, we had some singing and dancing, and it was a lot of fun. Um, some of the other people came, heard us, and came over to where we were at and joined our singing and dancing while we were there. But that was uh, an amazing place that day. It was hot, but it was a lot of fun, and that was probably one of my best memories from there. Um, these are other places that we went to and prayed and visited. The upper left, we went into a home with one of the church members from another church and had some of their other church members there. And we taught them how to use the Evangel Cube and talked to them about going out and witnessing. So that was one of our training groups in her house. And um, she had been paralyzed from a stroke and couldn't use her left arm, but she still had food spread and was very gracious and um, a very sweet-spirited lady. But um, when we got through with there, we went on to talk to the pastor's brother, and they were having fights with each other. So we ended up praying for a pastor to restore relationships with his brother, who was elder in the church. And the pastor that was with us, once he got them together, we were like 45 minutes, and they were arguing back and forth. He finally got them up, made them shake hands, picked one of them's arm up and laid it on the other shoulder, picked their arms up and pushed them together and made them hug. Then he called me over with the interpreter and I prayed for them. And they finally condescended to talk to one another. But um, that was kind of an interesting experience. But when we were through, the brother is actually one of their famous golf pros over there. And uh, he said, any time you're welcome in my home, please come back and visit. And so that was um, kind of a unique experience I wasn't expecting. But these others are just different places we went. The little Muslim girl was one of the ones we witnessed to in the park. These little kids, about half of them were Muslim, way out in the woods in a very <coughs> poor community. And then the upper right was out in the fishing village that we went to and prayed over these people, sometimes for infirmities but all, all ways for them to receive Christ into their heart. Uh, upper left picture, this is what they call an arcade room, a video arcade. It was a room in somebody's house and it had like massive amounts of wiring all over the walls just tacked up with nails and stuff and they would charge these kids to come play games there. And the parents asked us to go talk to them because they were afraid they were wasting their lives. And I got a chance to share with them through the interpreter. I'm off in the back, off to the right side there, sitting in a chair. But there were more kids behind that that you can't see in the picture. But there were 19 that prayed with us there at that group um, when we were through. And because of my experience with being um, athletic and racing and stuff like that, I talked to them about the points that they were racking up on those games and that the only points that matters are the ones we take with us the people that we witness to that we can share the gospel with that go with us. And at that moment that we leave this life and go into eternal life, those are the points that matter. And so I was able to relate that in a way that they could understand. And then these other three are also from the fishing villages. There are lots of these that we didn't get room for pictures, but it's an idea of the times of the little houses. Some of these little shack houses were actually built on stilts out over the water. Um, this was one of the prisons, entrance to one of the prisons that we went into, and this was the second one we went to. I think there were somewhere just over 100 in that group that we prayed with. And after we were through, um, I, one of the inmates handed me a note and wanted me to pray for him. And so we stayed behind, and there were three others that we also stayed behind and prayed and talked with. And this young man was gay and he wanted deliverance from that spirit and we prayed for him in that regard and when we were through with the prayers um, I mean he gave everybody hugs and he was so thankful that we were there but he said I will be praying for you and I think that's the most impressive thing for me when we go there to minister and those people minister to us it's not what we expect but it's such a blessing when they tell us that they're going to be lifting us up too and I was really thankful for that. But um, these are some of the different places. Uh, again, you can see that lower right. That's just a little tiny section of the steep 
steps that we went down, and as I was leaving that place, somebody was pouring out soapy wash water, and so not only it was it steep, it was wet and soapy trying to get down. And I'm thinking, I'm carrying my book bag because we have to carry water with us everywhere we go. We don't drink their water. We don't want to come back sick. But um, so we've got a backpack full of water bottles and all of our materials and things like that. So I'm trying to balance this book bag and not slip and slide down the road. Um, but uh, this is, Feb took over very quickly with the Evangelic Cube. He learned it like nothing flat, and he was really anxious to share when he got hold of that. Um, this was one of the ones up on top of a mountain. This was some of the kids at uh, an event that we had in a government housing. This was at a little restaurant. That was a typical restaurant setting. Um, Pastor Lenny was there on the right side. The lady between us and the one on the front both prayed to receive Christ right there at that little restaurant. Um, this was a government housing project that we went to. And uh, we actually met, it was pretty rough there, but we met between floors in the landing between the staircases. And we had chairs, they had chairs set up when we got there for uh, probably 45, 50 people, including little children. And after uh, this was Pastor Julius that was speaking there, they had singing and music and so forth. And I think 42, I believe, at that little place prayed with us to receive Christ. And uh, afterwards, they set up this food. One of the members at the church I was assigned to had a restaurant, and he brought the food to bless those people with before we left. Um, this is a Muslim training facility that was there uh, in town that we saw. And there were, there were mosques everywhere there, the little domed mosques and the, the Christian cross and the churches were all just intermingled everywhere, which was kind of interesting because they were all over the place. This little bicycle and this car here is out front of one of the churches that one of our members was assigned to right next door to a mosque in that neighborhood. Um, this on the left was in the park. They have a traditional game over there. It's just like the grease pole climb. And this was a massive statue there and all of the scaffolding where they're still constructing that statue. And then the little pink dome over there on the right side at the top is the outside of that structure from a distance. It was huge and it was lit up with lights at night, but it was kind of cool looking because that statue on the bottom was probably five times bigger than me. So it was a really big structure, but it was kind of cool. Their, pen, their park benches were very ornate over there, really beautiful there in the center. And then that was a plaza that was set up in the park with uh, kids out there doing karate lessons. But the sign there that's backwards says, God bless children on the park itself. The name of the park was God bless children park, which I thought was pretty fascinating. This is a uh, youth fellowship that I led uh, one of the evening services up there. You can see those stairs behind those girls just going into the darkness. And they went up the other way the same way. But I was trying to get that. But they're typical, you know, typical teenagers, photobombing and having fun. But um, we had some singing and the fellowship and the devotion up there that night in that home. Um, this was the restaurant up there on the right. The little uh, grill outside the window there, they take coconut shells like we do hickory bark and stuff like her hickory, and they burn the coconut shells, and that's what they cook their fish on over there. Um, the Kit Kat is a green tea Kit Kat. I tried it. It tastes like green tea. <laughs> it's like white chocolate green tea. I did that. I won't be buying another one. Uh, and those were... <laughs> Um, I, those were little pineapples growing in just somebody's yard. There are pineapples all over that little row of pineapples. And this was bamboo at the little fishing village. They had these bamboo poles woven together, and the walk was probably like from here to the front of the church outside. And we had to walk on those over the water to get to these little villages. And I got almost to the end, and I hear crack. And I'm like, how am I going to get back out of here? They're going to bring this boat up to the side. You're going to float me back to the dock. I'm going to make something, you know, I'm like, okay. So when they're coming back out, I'm carrying the bag and balancing again. I'm like, okay, I'm going to watch where he steps, and I'm going to step on those poles. So we got back out safely. These are some more of the fishing villages and another girl in the park that we prayed for. We went to the park, I think, three different times during the week, just 
walking out in open air and trying to engage people that were there as we met up with them. And uh, she was also a Muslim, and she prayed with us to receive Christ. And uh, most of these were more of those little fishing villages. We went to quite a few of, uh, in there that day. This is just some typical terrain, uh, typical houses that were up on the side. You can see the roof down at the, at the bottom of that one, and then another roof off to the right of that, and then one of the houses above it. It was stacked like that everywhere. everywhere. Um, those were rooftops looking out over Minato, and that was one of the types of guardrails. That traffic was so crazy, they had to keep them separated somehow. Um, this is coconut that is laying out on those mats just out in the street, and they take that and sell it and smoke it and render it for cooking oil. And that was something that we saw all over. Another one of the mountain, that's the little village that we were going up to the mountain. And this is kind of a rough little neighborhood, but that's um, some puppies that were out back and came wandering into one of the uh, presentations that we did in a little house. But uh, just kind of representative of the type of, of uh, poverty that some of them were living in there. We went into McDonald's one day and talked to some Muslims up in McDonald's at, on the plaza. But as we were going up there, we stopped on the bridge and took some pictures off the side there. And then the mountaintop that we went to, there were beautiful flowers up there. It was just, that was the only cool day out of the whole trip. We were up on top of the mountain. But from there, I could see where that island is real long and skinny. I could see the ocean on both sides. And it was beautiful up there. And then the, some of the girls from the orphanage went with us. Uh, they would drive two hours in to Monado every day, and they would um, go out with some of the teams and witness. They were all trained to use the Evangel Cubes, and they were very eager and very um, willing to go and share. And they were with us. That was the two right pictures were our shopping trip on the last day, and we were just clowning around having some fun. But they did some amazing things there too. One of the young men that was, um, I want to say 15 or 16 years old, that was with the orphan kids, they went into another village one day, and they were in one of the city officials' offices waiting for their, the man that leads, that's over the orphanage. He was there with some business for somebody else in that office, and while they were waiting out there. One of those kids witnessed to the security guards and led them to Christ. And another one of the boys, there was some man walking down the hall and he just engaged him in conversation and led him to the Lord. And he was the attorney general, not the attorney general, he was their, um, like their leader in their community. And he said, he said, I've known about the Lord all my life, but it took a child to lead me to the Lord. And he was very thankful for those kids coming in. But we need to have that same willing spirit to share what we have. Um, this is a fishery out there. they got hatcheries and there's nets up under all those poles out there. And uh, up in the upper left, those are cloves. This was during the harvest of the clove season. Some of them were bright yellow that had just been picked and laid out. And some of them were darker. And when you pass by, the aroma of cloves just filled the air everywhere. But um, those mats were all up there in those little villages along the side of the road. There's lots of little flags in this bottom picture out by the lake. And uh, those flags are to keep the birds away off the rice fields. But those went on for miles along the water there. And then the fish hanging down here were the fresh catch. The fishermen would take the boats out at night and fish all night and sleep in the daytime. And they would take... Uh, food with them to eat during the night. And the boats had little lights along the sides of the boat. And as we were leaving, it was beginning to get dusk. And I look back as we're winding around the mountains. And I'm looking back. You can see the horizon and the mountains and the, and the, the water off in the distance. And it was like a million diamonds out there on the water, all these boats that were out there ready to fish for the night. But this was their fresh catch hanging up there in the morning when we went up the mountain. That was my lunch one day on the side of the mountain of the fishing village. It was two kinds of fish. That lake has um, a fish they called a Nike, I believe. And they said that's the only fish in the world, the only lake in the world that you find that fish. And that was something that was indigenous to them. And that little green bowl is lemongrass and um, rice. And so that was our lunch that, that day. But we had a lot of fish and rice. 
Um, these are Reza and me and, and Amanda, and we became really good friends down there. Uh, the middle, Ruth, she was our leader for the trip. And then, of course, uh, Reza and me and Amanda became known as the three T's, the three troubles, because we were trouble for the kingdom of, of Satan out there. <laughs> so we had a lot of fun, and we were unwind a couple of days, and we, we, had a, we had a good time. And I still keep up with them on Facebook. And um, Reza sends me pictures of her feet. And... I know that sounds crazy, but I know her feet from the pictures. And I, she has different shoes or whatever. I'm like, okay, where are those feet taking you now? Where are you traveling to? So that's kind of our thing now. I'm watching where all she's going. Um, this was up on the mountain on one of the fishing villages. Those are rice paddies down in the center there um, up on that day that we got to go up high. And that was a beautiful view out there. It was amazing. Um, contrast, too. This is... Um, Something that I shared with Pastor Bill. That top sign says, someone loves you, drive with care. And uh, the bottom one is the Baja truck taking off. I'm single, nobody loves me. <laughs> so, some of you know me very well, and you know that I just cannot um, sit still. I can't wait for the next adventure, and I'm looking for some people to go with me. But um, it is truly an amazing an adventure. Um, I've got some things that I had with me that we used on the trip. The Avanja Cube, some of you may be familiar with. We also used these books that were made up for big pictures to tell the story uh, if there were more children involved. But we had these with us. And I have some samples of things that I bought at the market there, some of the beautiful embroidery that was there. Apparently, people come from all over to the markets there to shop. I've heard that, and I saw the market in the shops that we went to, and I'm really not sure why they would do that. But, um, <laughs> but apparently there were some greater malls near the, the ocean that I didn't get to go to. I picked up some interesting um, fruit chews that kind of look like, um, like strawberry starburst or something, but they have moringa in it, which is very healthy. Um, choose and you know just a sample of some things there these are our we have to keep ledgers every day we have to keep a journal that we turn in with the reports of how many people and where we've been and what we've done through the day and at the end of the week we turn those into our leader for reporting and the bible that i carried with me we had this card that's printed up in english on one side and in their language on the other which gave them a reminder and a way to reconnect with what they had done. And everybody that prayed with us, we wrote their names down and gave to their local pastors to pass on to follow up with them. So we didn't just hit and run. These people have somebody following up on them all the time. And some of the pictures that I showed, the kids have these cards in their hands. My journal. Then, of course, they gave me a certificate for showing up. These are... Um, this thing that you wear around your neck and this thing around your waist, never leave home without it. <laughs> we had to have our passport and all of our documents on us at every given moment that we were on the, on outside the hotel room. We had to be with an interpreter, and there had to be three of us together. And that's because of the type of communities that we were in for our safety. Uh, we were, um, I mean, I kept the money in one, and I kept the the document with the passports and stuff in the other. And that's just so that you know that we just don't go, you know, rambling in like a tourist to a country. We take great care in planning what we're going to do before we get there. And uh, there's also a business card that we take with us that looks like uh, a travel agent card. But if we are in a position to call that card for any reason, it doesn't matter what you say on the telephone. The fact that you call the card, they come and extract you. They get you out of there. So, but I think that um, so far they've never had to do that. Another thing, you will find that I have not posted these pictures online. About 14 years ago, there was a situation where somebody did post a lot of these pictures from a trip. And because these pictures are date, time, and stamped, and digital, you can go back and find these people. 
and some of the one of the pastors and some of the congregation in one of the villages was actually killed by the Muslims. And so, if you don't see me post a lot of those pictures, that's why it's for their benefit, for their uh, safety and well-being. But you can see from a lot of the pictures there was a lot that went on that week, and we were exhausted every day. <laughs> but um, it was a beautiful thing. It was amazing. Um, again, how the Holy Spirit works before you get there. Their hearts and minds were so receptive. It was just amazing and a joy to share with them. And um, that's one of the things that really has surprised me in, on any of the trips that I've gone on is how willing they are to hear the gospel message. And it burdens me that the people in our country are so defensive and argumentative about hearing anything um, that's relating to Christ. We really need to pray uh, for God to open hearts and minds of people here the same way. We need to have that willingness to receive the word in their hearts, just like we have seen in other countries. Now, not everybody receives it, but we had amazing results, and I was so blessed to be a part of this trip. Um, I made it through the week just fine, but when coming back through Narita Airport in Tokyo, Standing in line so long, waiting to get through, changing your money back and getting, you know, through, you know, we have to go through baggage and all that stuff. My feet were swelled up like an inch higher than they were supposed to be. And the leader, Ruth, is also a Chinese medicine acupuncture person. And she actually had me prop my feet up on my suitcase and put needles in my feet and my hands while we're sitting there waiting on the next flight to help me make it to the next flight. So I'm looking like a porcupine sitting in the airport. And I want to get up and get some water. And she says, don't move. You can't move. I'm like, I'm thirsty. Somebody get me some water. She said, but you can't move. The needles will come out. OK. But they helped. And I made it back through um, the travel. And uh, the travel is wearying. It's tiring. But uh, it's an amazing an adventure that I would never trade. And I've said to some of you before, I'm an adventure spirit. I'm going one day Mach 5 with my hair on fire. I cannot wait for the next trip. I don't know how it's going to happen, but um, it, it's a joy to see people come to the Lord like that. And some of the people that we were talking to, I said, one, they would like, you need to come back. We're having this, this convention in our little village. You need to come back later for this. I'm like, it's a long way to come back, but one day we'll see you again in heaven. And I said, all the people that we have shared with, this is going to be like a football stadium, just walk, you know, like you have a reservation at the Springs with your family reunion. I said, look for our, look for our, um, look for our, our arena out there because there's going to be a bunch of us there having a big time. And we're going to look forward to seeing you again. One of the little ladies that I talked to in the fishing village had lost her husband. She was a widow. And she was my age. We had the same birthday. And uh, I almost couldn't get her off of me. She was just wanting to hug. And she just kind of latched on. And you build a connection with these people. And you don't ever forget. You see their faces. You still remember to pray for them individually. And you know where their heart was. And you know what their needs were. And you, you just begin to realize how small we are in God's kingdom, but how much we can do if we're just willing to yield to what he said. And people have asked me many times over the past, what's your favorite scripture? Well, that's pretty clear and pretty simple and pretty easy. It's in Matthew 28. It starts with the word go. And that's pretty much like I took that for granted that that meant go. <laughs> so, so I try to go. Uh, some of you also know that we're trying to start up a missions team here to assist pastor with evaluating um, who wants to come speak to us, helping coordinate efforts for not only what Steve Carlson does with um, CEF and some of the others, but some of the other ministries. Some of us are going to try to get together and form something here that is more intentional and more proactive about being able to not only assist pastor but make decisions and also prepare for more work for this church to be involved in that involves missions. And um, I ask you to pray about that. If you're not able to do it, um, let us know that you're willing to pray for us as a team, be a prayer partner for that group. But just know that that's coming. We've also talked about the visitation on Sunday afternoons. 
Uh, my schedule is such that I can't be here late because I live so far out of town, but I'm willing to meet people in uh, early afternoon after church if somebody wants to meet with me, have a light lunch, and do a team or two early in the afternoon and then have a second team go out at night, then we can cover more territory, but that's something else that I would invite you to pray about and think about joining us. Um, we can do some training and show you how to share the gospel. Um, people don't bite. They're not, they're, I mean, some people are a little argumentative, but, you know, you just graciously leave whatever word you can with them and move on, go to the next one. But um, missions is an exciting thing. And uh, we were put here to share God's word. We're put here to do his work. We're his hands and feet. And uh, we just need to be willing to do what he's called us to do. And I just thank you for all of your prayers, all of your support, and allowing me to do what I've been able to do. When we were on the way back, Amanda was pretty well wiped out too, so we were all done. All right, thank you so much for allowing me to go. And I, I love all of you, and I appreciate what you were able to let us do. Is this on? There we go. Thank you, Miss Ginger. And the Bible says, How beautiful are the feet of those that share the gospel of peace, carry salvation to those in the earth. And, uh, when you said you had pictures of her feet, I was thinking that scripture. I said, you got beautiful feet too, Miss Ginger. Even though they were swollen, you did what God told you to do. And, and uh, we want to do more of that.